Hello everyone! In this video, we're going to be talking about models! No, not that kind of model. We're talking about machine learning models, and specifically models that you or your colleagues have built and are now looking to deploy for your next change the world application. Getting a model to run on your laptop is great for development and testing, but what if you need to run predictions against a large batch of data? Or if you need to continuously run predictions with a model given a stream of ever arriving data points, robustly and at scale. For this, you're going to need to make use of a data processing framework. One of my favorites is Apache Beam. If you're new to data engineering, let's zoom through what you need to know about Apache Beam. So what do you need to know? Apache Beam has been around for a while. It's designed for data processing at scale, it's flexible, and it's got plenty of helpful utilities. If you like choices, you'll be happy to know that it lets you choose where to run it. You can run it on-prem or you can run it on the cloud, and it lets you pick your favorite among several programming languages, including Python, Java, and even Go. If you have a data processing problem at scale, there is an excellent chance that Apache Beam is a great solution for you. That said, Apache Beam wasn't always the darling that it is today. Back in the early days, the only supported language was Java, and we didn't have all the lovely helper utilities, for example, the run inference utility that we'll talk about today. But technology is getting better and better every day, including the tools that we use to build better tech. So if you tried Apache Beam in the old days and you tossed it aside, I'd encourage you to give it another shot at winning your affection. With all the progress, it's hard to stay on top of new developments. Some people might simply not realize just how much better this and other solutions are today at solving problems for you, which is why a lot of folks end up writing reams and reams of boilerplate code themselves when you can achieve the same goals in just a few lines of code. And that is what I'm here to tell you. However hard you think it is, it's probably not that hard. So let's take a look at the things that you had to do before Apache Beam introduced the run inference utility. And for this, my friend Cassie will give things a go. Hey, Cassie. I'm excited that you want to find out what's in my code. So um, let me take you through what I've got going on here. So first of all, I have tens of thousands of images in the cloud. In this case, they're in a Google Cloud storage bucket. So I'll need to get my pipeline to read them and then get them in the right shape for my model. OK. So Apache Beam will take care of making sure that all the work gets spread across all the machines that I've made available. OK, next, we'll transform these into the right size. For that, I'll use a beam.map function call. OK, that was the easy bit. OK, uh, so here's some fiddly setup. I spent several hours on this. This bit batches my values into a decent size. I also need to load the model in, but I don't want to do that for every element. So let's just do it all in one go in the do function. Now, this model is a big one with lots of parameters, so I better make sure that it's shared across all the threads. Uh, we don't want to have lots of the same model in memory. Okay, now this bit makes sure that the data I want to predict has its metadata attached. Okay, next we'll make the output a nice stable object since I might want to use this bit of code in several places. Uh, let's make sure that I copy all this. Okay, there we go. Now let me try to remember, how do I make sure that the model gets updated on the fly? Okay, okay, stop. That's all boilerplate. There is nothing specific to our model in any of that stuff. Okay, Cassie, I suppose I'll just have to show us the right way to solve this problem. We will use the run inference transform and pass in configuration information about the model. In this case, we're going to use the image model from TorchVision, which is an open source model that I've downloaded and put into the same bucket location as my images. So let's just run this for a single image and see the output. Great, done. And now we easily apply it to all of them and we finished our job. And now, Cassie, why don't you take it from here and get that data into a data warehouse? Well, at least now this bit's going to be the easy part for me. Uh, now I just need to make use of beam.map again to run my post-processing logic, which is the same logic that I used on my laptop. So I just 
copy here, but now it's gonna be done at scale on all the images. And then I'm gonna push the results to my database. Thanks, Cassie. I think we've got it from here. So another advantage that we have with Apache Beam is that we can actually make use of multiple models in the same pipeline. Let's have a look at some spaghetti. I mean, complex multi-model pipeline. I mean, spaghetti. Spaghetti really is the right word for that mess. My poor data point will need to run a real obstacle course to get through all this. But luckily for us, we don't have to code any obstacle courses ourselves. If we ignore the details here, what this breaks down to is some simple patterns that are just applied multiple times. From our data point's point of view, the first pattern is a branch. So our data point has to go through two different models at the same time. The other pattern is when a data point goes through one model, and then the result of that transformation has to go into another model. Let's see how this would look in code. For our branching problem, all we need to do is apply different models to the same data. The code for this is very simple. And for our sequential models pattern, all we need to do is pass our data through the first model. After this, we'll normally need to shape the data for the second model in the sequence, which we'll do with a beam.map function, and that's it. We've rolled all that spaghetti into some simple patterns. Thanks to the new run inference utility in Apache Beam, running a model within a pipeline is really easy. With far less boilerplate code, less technical debt, not to mention less spaghetti and fewer headaches. We showed you how this works with a large collection of data that was in a storage bucket, but with Apache Beam, you can also easily work with data that is coming from a streaming source like Apache Kafka or Google Cloud PubSub. All you'd need to do is change the type of reader. I encourage you to explore this topic and get going with data engineering, machine learning, and Apache Beam by diving into the links that you'll find in the video description below. Happy scaling! <laughs>